Take precepts, stay diligent. Uh, diligent. The boss I build of this army, so now we militant. Uh, militant. Yeah, I was shy, coming like a thief in the night. Uh, you gotta stay woke, gotta watch vigilant. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty sure you probably heard that before that like we ain't supposed to be eating it because the uh because they are made to be just the uh the clean up animal of the farms. You know what I'm saying? They they eat basically anything. They'll eat bodies, car parts, like whatever you lay in front of a pig, it'll eat, man. It's disgusting. Bring that up. It's a book of lip. <laughs> God. <laughs> you damn, uh, you damn, uh, 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 motor. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse, you want to start at 7? Uh, no, you know nothing. Con. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. Now what in the water has fins and scales? Right. I was like, because there's, there's certain fish, you know, some fish, they have fins, but they don't have scales. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you gotta, you gotta, exactly. Catfish being one of the main ones. I remember my mama used to try to get me to eat catfish all the time. And just growing up, I knew something wasn't right about it, man. You open it up and they got that just black film in there, man. It's disgusting, man. <laughs> Finish it up. It says that all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. It said the Lord said that those other things, you know what I'm saying, them abominations unto you. You ain't supposed to eat none of that stuff. Because you start looking at what the, the shrimp, the crab, the lobster, the oysters, you know what I'm saying, you start looking at those things and comparing them to, you know what I'm saying, the things that are creeping upon the earth. It's like basically you eating scorpions and spiders. Like, it's disgusting. Like, you ain't gonna pick up a roach that's crawling on the wall and be like, yeah, I'm gonna eat that. So, you know, that's the same thing you're doing when you start eating the bottom feeders, man. Bring that up. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Say, this, this is another law. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of them garments. And that bid meaning command. You know, he's telling telling Moses he got to talk to his people and tell them that it's something that he need them to start doing, right? Throughout their generations. And, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Say, so you know this on it? You know there's something about every brother up here? About what's on what's on their clothes? So you look at all the brothers up here? Even the sister's skirt? You familiar with these? Got you. Bring that out again. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So the Lord said that we supposed to wear fringes. This is part of our culture. Exactly. Through, through, throughout their generation. And that they put upon them a fringe of the borders of ribbon of blue. So you can wear whatever color fringes you want. Like mine red, brother got on black, James got on the multicolors. I was like, you got the brother over there. Yeah, I was like, you got gold. You know what I'm saying? Like you can wear whatever color fringes you want, but as long as you got that blue ribbon on there, then you're doing what the Lord commanded you. And yeah, it may be fresh, you know what I'm saying? It's something different. We didn't just wake up and decide to just do this. There's a reason that the Lord told us to put these on. Bring it up. And it shall come. And it shall be unto you for a friend that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And what? And do them. No, and just to look at it. And, and do, do them. them. Yeah, so when you when somebody give you when somebody give you that catfish, you're supposed to look down and be like, man, I got my friend or something. I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a I'm a chosen one of the Lord's chosen people, you know what I'm saying? I can't be going off doing that. That's why these commandments are for us. So you look down and you remember that you got to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. You got another one? The book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 17. Bring it out! Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. And that's how we actually love each other is because we're showing that we love the Lord by keeping this commandments. I was like, we can't say that we love our brothers, but yet we want to shoot them. We want to fight them. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to steal this girl on that Trey Song spirit. Yeah, man, that's off. 
that ain't showing that you love your brother. Like, tell him you love him, you walk through and you just beating him up, man. That, that's just madness. That don't make any sense. Give me a... God. Yeah, I was like, you got to correct your brother, man. You can't be afraid to tell your brother where he going wrong at, where he going off, man. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse number 26. You should not, you should, you should not eat anything with the blood. Neither shall you use enchantment nor observe times. You shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. You know what that sounds like, bro? Well, one thing, um, I don't know what the champion You should not eat anything with the blood. So we spoke of kosher on meat. But just cook it through. You don't, you don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't eat bl uh, uh, medium rare. Yeah, you know when you go to a steakhouse, them, them cooks, they like to tell you that's the best way to eat a steak. It's like when it's halfway done, they cut it, and you just see all blood all over the plate. You know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't like that shit. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. You catch, the, you catch the right one of us, man. They they, they weird like that. They, well, I had one partner who I knew, who, who I saw do that, right? And he actually thought it was funny. Like, he's a cooking steak, and he'll check it and make sure it was still kind of cooked. And we was looking at him one day, and he like, yeah, he eating it, but he got a white girl. So, it makes sense. See that? Hey, man. What's that precept about, uh, say, don't worry, no, man. It's kind of sad things, too. Yeah, man, everything that we talk about, man, there's a precept for it. Bring it up. saw really ate was that? I mean, that's what they say. I mean, but, yeah, it was just a, it was just a pottage that Jacob made. Remember that? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter seven, and verse number number three. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter thou shalt not give unto thy son. He said, you shouldn't give your children over this. You know, like when you you looking at TV now, that's all they promoting is mixed couples. They pro they promoting that our men go off to their women. They promoting that that you know what I'm saying they uh that they men go over to our daughters. And you gotta think when the seed line is coming from the man, that when uh, uh when the sister is having a baby by a so-called white man, it ain't no black baby. Yeah, it's gonna go through the curses. You know what I'm saying they're getting picked on. You know what I'm saying being looked at weird because they got melanated skin, but you still go by the seed line of your father. So it's like. You're just giving away that inheritance. You know what I'm saying? There ain't no royal lineage no more. When I was uh, young, when I used to date, outside, I had a girl in, in middle school and another girl, one Vietnamese and one Mexican. Both of them told me at some point that their father said that they couldn't talk to me. The Mexican girl said, not just because you're not Mexican, but because you're not Mexican and Catholic. Even if you was Mexican, if you were to Catholic too, See, and that, that's our dollar tree. Vietnamese girl said, because you're not uh, Vietnamese, right? But I didn't feel no kind of way about that. I kind of, I kind of thought like, damn, and I was like, if I was her daddy, I'd feel the same way. Yeah, so if, I was cool if we, if we, if we, we simply playing. implemented that, like, we'd be moving so much better. I wasn't going to be in love with her, no way. But I was kind of like, I understand why her daddy feel that way. Why come, and I was like, damn, why come black people don't do that? We just, because they wanted their lineage to stay within their families. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So when you're giving it over, then it's no longer your thing. You're mixing all these different different theologies and different, you know, customs and cultures. And, you know, that's why when, when you look at the Catholicism, everything behind it is just wicked. Because from Catholicism breasts off every other so-called religion that we got. Where's that man-made religion? I didn't argue with it. It didn't disagree with me. Because it made a lot of stuff that I felt already make sense. It made a lot of it make sense. Mm -hmm. I was like, no wonder I don't uh and never knew why. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Finish that verse up. The book of Deuteronomy chapter seven and verse Damn, where I'm at. Seven and verse three. Bring out! Neither shall thou make marriages with them, thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son. 
nor his daughter shalt thou give unto thy son, for they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. When you first came up, we was talking about, you know what I'm saying, the, the typical, the well, the basic Ten Commandments. And you're saying how number number one and number two, you know what I'm saying, are going into idolatry. You shouldn't have no other gods other than the Most High. You shouldn't make any graven images. And that's what that all goes into. And you was just saying, when you're going out to the other nations, they're going to make you start following their gods. You look at the Chinese people, they got the little, the little Asian baby, you know what I'm saying, and then Catholicism, they got uh, Caesar Borgir being white Jesus. You know, that's all things that are taking you away from the Most High. Bring that out. It doesn't matter to everybody but us. Even when I used to watch TV, I watch sitcoms, whenever uh, they kids and stuff was dating, they would always ask that kind of stuff. What 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 church did they go to or ask about their parents? It was like comments. So everybody know that but us. We, we don't ask that kind of stuff. This is the book of 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 4. I think it's all of our forefathers dealt with this. That's why it, when you start looking into these early books in the Bible, man, it, it got so many stories that it let you know where we're going off it. There's plenty of examples in there. Go ahead. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wife turned away his heart at the other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God. It was the heart of David, his father. I said, so just like his his father, King David, King Solomon was going off and dealing with dealing with other women. So they started making them, you know, saying want to start worshiping other gods other than simply keeping the commandments, following the Most High God. Bring that up. Book of Tobit, chapter four, and verse twelve. Bring it out. But where of all hoarder, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers, and take not a strange woman to wife which is not of thy father's tribe. For we are the children of the prophets, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember my son that our fathers from the beginning, even that they all married wives of their own kindred and were blessed in their children and their seed shall inherit the land. It's like, it's going into what you was just saying, that it was like, you have to stay within your lineage you know what I'm saying? That way you're not giving away your child over to just anything, man. Because if you dealing with the same lineage, they're going to have the same beliefs, same customs with you. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no ain't no disagreements there. You know what I'm saying? That's why the Lord said a house divided, it's not going to stand. So if you want to serve the most high, but then you got a, a wife over her that want to worship white Jesus, still want to be, you know what I'm saying, uh, bowing down to, to the damn wooden cross. You know what I'm saying? You're dealing with a, a Islamic woman and she want to go off and, and go to Mecca, you know what I'm saying? That, that ain't going to work out. You got to be on one accord, man. That's why the Lord said when you marry your wife, it's one flesh. How you going to be one flesh with one mind if you serve a different, different you know, entity, man? It ain't going to work out like that. You got any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> what about y'all brothers, man? How y'all doing today? Hey, 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 speak up on uh, Christianity, man. Man, that's never ended. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right now. Uh, hey, that's one of my brothers. And, uh, oh yeah. You know about the oh, all praise, all praise. Down there with us. See that? Malachi, yeah, I was down there with us. So you going to what you was just bringing out earlier? The Book of Romans, chapter one and verse twenty-five. Bring it out. Who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever? Amen. I said, so our people worship everything beside the Most High. Everybody loves to say they want to thank the universe. You know, you got sisters walking around burning sage, worshiping stones. You know, just everything other than just giving reverence to the Most High. Why worship what you can see rather than worship the, the one that actually made everything, man? Saying they got the God within. Saying, I'm, saying I'm the God within. <laughs> yeah, hey, man, that's some 5% of stuff, I man. I got a girl who, be, who likes to... She wanna have these conversations with me just so they can end in arguments three hours later and then she can end up hanging up the phone just because I don't agree with her. Why do what I'm saying make you so mad? Because the truth hurts, I man. I said, listen, you know I identify as an Israelite and you think that's some BS going in. You know they're going in. So you wanna have these conversations so we can disagree, but it upsets you. Yeah. But it don't upset me that you disagree with me. But you get mad every time, and they, they want to get offensive. Then it's more about me than about the conversation. But it's you, this, and you that. Hold on, we weren't talking about me. We're not talking about you. 
like, yeah, they, they crazy. Them, they new girls who believe that, they mm. all crazy. Believe that they goddesses and Venus, Mother Earth, God they, is they got, they got spirits they, on they, all they, they stuff, lives be a man. All of them, they all believe that the God is in them. But if y'all are gods and y'all can create, oh, okay, oh, well, oh, we can create people. God, uh, uh, children come from women. But y'all can't do nothing else right. If y'all gods, then how y'all gonna save and fix and do everything that God say he gonna do? Hey, if, if, woman, if the woman was God, then how come we ain't saved out of this captivity yet? Exactly. Because we've been bowing down to women for the longest, man. Everything that, that the so-called black man do is, is for the woman, man. We always sit here and get dressed up, you know what I'm saying, that for our brothers to look at us and compliment us, man. You're going out because you want sister's attention. I'm like, everything that we do is, is dedicated to the woman. What you got? Book of Jeremiah to the 23 and verse 1. Bring it out! Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus said the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evils of your doing, saith the Lord. So the Lord is, is going to actually return the vengeance upon their own heads, man. Because that's why the Lord look at us as sheep. Because we need a shepherd. We can't, we can't do anything on our own that we actually need somebody to guide us and to lead us. But that's why... I, that's why we actually going through a lot of the things that we going through is because we never looked at at Christ being our leader. We never looked at our forefathers as our examples. We always just wanted to follow our own heart. Everybody like to walk around and say that that God knows my heart, but Jeremiah 17 say that the heart is deceitful above all things. You know, we got to actually lean on the Lord and the law set you that commandments because that is the the guidance that we supposed to have. It's a simple rule. Bring it up. This is the book of Ephesians chapter six. Verse 12. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. I said, we got to put on that whole armor of God. We can't go out, you know what I'm saying, doing anything in vanity or in strife. You know what I'm saying? We got to actually have faith that the Most High is going to pull us through. Go ahead. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wheels of the devil. Say so we got to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because the, the Satan is walking the earth like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He, he wants us to go off in any way possible. That's why every food commercial you look at, the burgers are wrapped in pork. That's why we're just talking about the steak being bloody. You know, that's the... That's the ways that they want us to go. They want our sisters to be out here wearing pants. They want everybody to just whore off themselves and just, you know, go around sleeping with whoever. You know, you look at all the TV shows, you look at the news, that's all they're going to portray. They don't portray the, the woman as being in the house taking care of the children. They don't portray the man as being in the house, actually being an example to his household. You know, actually leading his woman. Actually raising up uh, raising up his, his son to be a man. You know what I'm saying? They, they just look at our men as deadbeats. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, being in prison. Damn spirits, man. Finish that up. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I said, so we ain't supposed to be out here gang banging. You know what I'm saying? Wanting to fight each other. You know what I'm saying? We ain't supposed to be fighting in the flesh. But against principalities. Against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I said we fighting against spiritual battles that are outside of our hands. I said because you got the people that are sitting up at the courthouses, you know, sitting up in all these high rise buildings. They the ones that's making all the all the plays. They the ones calling all the shots. We got to fight against all that. Because if you sending your children off to school, they teaching them any and everything. They teaching the pronouns. You know, they teaching them all the, the wisdom of this world, man. And that's all foolishness with the Most High. Teaching them that they need to be, uh, teaching them about, what's that? I'm so tired of my friends, because I'm getting up in age now where my my parents' kids are adult are getting grown. Mm -hmm. And they keep on bragging about their kids going to the service. And I don't be wanting to piss in their cornflakes and be always be like, but I don't, that don't impress me. You sending them to the fucking service? Right. And they be like. Sending them off to basically get killed. They sending them into a dummy mission. 
since we have to fight another man war hey, to, to fight other people's wars we ain't start the war it's not patriotic like that I mean, that's what I tell them y'all I know I don't give a damn about the government you gonna go fight for them yeah hey, and I was reading up on I'm about to cut you off I was reading up on something about uh, Hitler right how we so fucking brainwashed that we as black people start hating Hitler because he was killing Edomites you know what I'm saying? Exactly. But he was only so, killing the people that wanted to be you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, it, I was like, that's the thing with school. You know, we all been brainwashed. They they made up a master plan and they just succeeded because we took it and ran with it. We didn't, you know, look at the other sides of it. We didn't actually dig up the details and actually study to see, you know, what the root of the problem was. We just looked at it as he was just killing people. But when you look at it, that's all that the other nations have done is rape, rob, and murder everybody. That's how we heard. You got the sub-Saharan slave trade. You got the transatlantic slave trade. That's all these people know. I remember when we was in school, and uh, and we was looking at the whole, uh, I don't even know what they called the war, when they was looking for uh, Osama and all that. They said looking for weapons of mass destruction. The only thing they was trying to do was go over there and steal the oil, man. What you got? This the book of uh, Jeremiah. Chapter 23 and verse number 32. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, said the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them, therefore they shall not profit this people at all, said the Lord. I said, and we got these pastors and, you know, all the leaders amongst our people that aren't actually helping them at all. They just leading them, leading them to earn even more and more. What you got? The book of Deuteronomy chapter, it's like it, Jeremiah chapter 28 and verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied it both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. I said our forefathers been doing the same thing we doing now. Warning them that the famines are coming. Warning them that there's these sicknesses that are going around that the, that the heathens make. But then they try to come up with a, a solution for it as well. It's like, of course you got the solution, you made the problem. But the real solution is having faith in the Most High. Because if you start just taking their uh, they medicines, start confining their system, just looking for they, they hope and salvation, it ain't going to come, man. You're going to end up just being caught out there this morning. Pastor, the pastors ain't telling you these things is coming. Uh, the prophet which prophesied of peace when the word... Of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent them. Yeah, because the churches, they tell you just everything going to be all right. They just peach in peace and prosperity, not knowing that this world is actually coming to an end. You know, what we know of the end of the world is the end of Esau, Edom's kingdom, man. Everything is going to get destroyed. But, you know, for us to actually get salvation out of what's to come of this world, we got to start keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments. I got a question. Okay. Hey man, since you're on that, could you uh, speak up on religion and faith? Gotcha. Because uh, religions are all just made up by the heathens. Like, we're trying to come back to our nationality. Hey, like, you got religions. All these religions were made by different so called white men. None of those are actually wrote out inside the Bible. The Bible is just about the Most High God having a relationship with his people being the Israelites, the 12 tribes. None of these religions are actually listed in there. The word Christian is only in there one time. And the Christian just goes back to the term of follower of Christ. One thing, uh, uh, when he said uh, Christianity, one thing I noticed about every Christian that I see stop and talk to Israelites when they are preaching the word and it eats me up out of all of the things they could debate if they want to debate they could question anything on there question anything y'all say of all the stuff and I'm sure you've seen it the right. one thing that they want to argue is salvation for them people 
They want to bring them so bad. So of all, bad. Out of all the billions of things they could be discussing with y'all, they right. want to sit here and argue about whether or not they're going to be saved too. That's the biggest yeah. thing that our people want to say. They get when, mad about that, bro. When somebody get raped and the police show hey, up, they not looking you. to save the, <laughs> the raper, man. I just told you that you were chosen. You ain't exactly. happy enough oh, about hey. that to talk about that. You want to work And they want to fight it. Hey, my wife had the same, same fucking discussion there, motherfucker. Hey, every, every argument, man. I'm telling her, man, yo, hey, you, you, you inherit this kingdom. I said, what about this? What, what about, about them? them? <laughs> yeah, what, what about them? What about yourself, man? Why you putting everybody else above you? Yeah, that's crazy. This is the book of Colossians, chapter 2, and verse number 8. It says, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. It said, the Lord said, don't let any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Through prosperity, doctrine, through just telling you that everything is going to be all right. You know, they got to actually teach you this word. I remember going to church and they didn't actually go through the word. They just brought out a couple precepts and then they just talked all day. And that's why we got to come with continuously with precepts. We got to hearken on these words diligently. Go ahead. It said, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men. After the traditions of God. After the tradition of men. Christianity. After the tradition of men. Catholicism. After the tradition of men. Islam. After the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. I said none of those things are Christ. Even when you look at like Islam, you know, that's a jailhouse religion. Founded, <laughs> founded by a man that was just picking up bits and pieces of everybody else's religion and then coming up with one doctrine. That's nation of Islam, that's a, that's a prison religion. It was made in 1920 by Wolf Dave Muhammad. He came up with nation of Islam from yeah. prison. From prison. <laughs> Madness. In captivity, you just make up some stuff and then everybody else just run with it. So when you're dealing with, with Ishmael and you know the 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 true uh the true Islamic people, you know, they ain't want nothing to do with us. That's why when you got Malcolm X and everything else was trying to trying to hop on board with that, it ain't work out. They can't tell me how Muhammad is supposed to be a prophet. A dude gave me a damn thing. They gave me something to say, what is Islam? God knows the Salama, like, God. I knew what I was doing. I'm trying to find ways to disprove it and find things so I can have knowledge when I'm speaking about it, because I'm I'm not into it, right? But it said that they that they uh believe in in the scriptures and in, in the gospel, meaning the Torah and the gospel, right? Yeah, the yeah so the uh, and I tell the Quran him, tell you go back to the Bible. Y'all follow the Bible. He's like, no, Quran only. I said, but the book you gave me, you gave me this, right? Said something totally different. Do you yep. not even know what you follow? Exactly. Like, they don't make, and then it said that the prophets have come from. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God, yeah. But Muhammad come from Ishmael. So I asked him about that. Oh, now he don't know everything. And now it's this and yeah. now, now it's all just dead end. Now it's all well, I don't know everything about this and this and this and that. I'm like... I, I you could, you simply you confound them just by questions. Like you don't even have to actually bring out any of the verses in the Quran. You just literally yeah, just ask I questions. Need to, I needed to know what to ask them. That's all. Mm -hmm. And I found two things that just was like right. That's obvious right there. Yeah. I said, but yeah, I was like, it tell you to follow the Bible, but at the same time, they tell you that you can eat pork if it's the last thing that's around. Which, as long as yeah. you do it with your left hand. They say you do it with your left hand, you ain't going <laughs> off. He 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 but the Lord told us it's an abomination to that. us. He's the one about you to beat your wife, too. You're supposed to be close, man. All right, man. You take it easy. Hey, King, let me leave you with this last precept, too, for Christianity. Because a lot of the preachers that that goes up, that's up in these church, standing on these damn podiums, don't have a damn, don't have no type of knowledge about the Bible or the precept that they bring out. They talk about, they bring out one precept, and they talk for thousands of hours to the point where you feel like, man, he about to go again? Oh, shit. Hey, he about to go again? So look. It's a guy got three services. You go to church at 8 o'clock in the morning, don't leave till 5. So look, this, this is the book of Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7. It says, For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So if the preacher is over here preaching, and he's not telling you to keep no commandments, hey, he's speaking rhetoric. 
He said, and he didn't have no knowledge. He's speaking lies. He's speaking philosophy and vain to see out of his mouth. Because the Yahawashi, who people ignorantly call Jesus Christ, he came and told you that, hey, I have not come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have come not to, or I have not to destroy, but to fulfill. I Meaning not end, because when they hear this word fulfill, they say like, oh, the law is done away with. No, because he said in the next verse, from one jot to one tittle, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's Matthew 5. It's uh, uh, 17 on down. Brother got it. It's Mark 19. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That's right. Because what? Because it is no light in them. So if they ain't speaking according to the law, statutes, and commandments, it's no light in them, people, man. Right. They have no light when the only thing you read is a couple of verses from Psalms. You read something in Galatians that just say all people and Gentiles, and then you just run with it. You, you got to understand. And then you suck it and dive, and then you throwing yourself around the damn church. Like Ecclesiastes 12 and, and 13 say, man, you got to you gotta say the whole conclusion of the whole matter, man. Right. You can't just take one word and just run with it. Go ahead. This is the book of Sirach, the 19 and verse 19. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do the things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. Play. Play. You got to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. Anything right. else is just folly and vanity. You got something? Look at Psalms chapter 96 and verse 5. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. That's right. Yeah, I said, man, the most high made everything. Everything else is just an idol. We going back to the days uh, uh, dealing with our forefathers when they was just making idols just out of out of all kinds of gold. You know, they, just look at it now. We was just talking about the Islam and the Christianity. They following the cross. They following the stones. Following <laughs> Mecca, and they're bowing down on the carpet, looking goofy, man. Yeah. Yeah, money definitely is people got. Our people wake up every day trying to figure out what's the, the next way that they can get a bag, man. I got the I need, I need, oh, you uh, want to even have some.